antithetical. It's one of those concepts that on paper sounds so logical and easy to apply. And yet when it comes to applying it in our lives, it can be frustratingly difficult, if not impossible. And the thing is, if it was that easy, we'd all be doing it and we'd all be happy out all of the time. But that's just not how life is. Unfortunately, our brain doesn't always comply the way in which we'd like it to. It doesn't play ball. And the more we try to avoid thinking about something, the more we try to let it go, oftentimes the tighter our clinch on it becomes and the more salient it becomes in our mind and this can be extremely frustrating I know it was for me because for so many years I was going to various therapy modalities I was you know incorporating all of these healing and um, properties and techniques and strategies into my day-to-day -day life and I couldn't understand why there were some things that I just couldn't let go and I suppose a eureka moment for me was understanding that from my own personal experience I was never going to let them go I had to learn to make peace with them to let them be and to coexist with them and that was a real game changer for me to recognize that there was no kind of final destination that I was going to get to where it was like any of these things never existed they were always going to be there they were always going to evoke certain feelings in me and it was up to me to not allow them to consume me to live in in equanimity with them as opposed to fighting them or assuming that I could shake them off you know and that involves a lot of personal inquiry you know and I think oftentimes there's this kind of nearly esoteric paradigm of how life can be when you put all of these kind of I suppose healing and spiritual practices in place and for a lot of people that's not the reality and it can lead to a lot of disillusionment and and disappointment whereas what we really need to be asking ourselves is okay how do I need to work with myself today what is it that I can do today that will make my life that little bit better that will align me with what I want to reflect and the person that I want to be and how can I learn to coexist with the parts of myself that I do struggle with you know to coexist with the parts of my past that I struggle with because ultimately they're never going anywhere they're always going to be there but you can learn how to engage with them in such a way so that they don't have center stage all of the time and you know when we try to deny or when we try to repress the likelihood is things get bigger whereas when we notice compassionately things begin to ebb away you know and it sounds like a paradox but it's actually not it makes sense the more welcoming we are of something the less of a need we are to fight with it you know and it it kind of allows us to move into a place of truth and love where we can explore what gives us meaning what gives us a sense of fulfillment and again that's another common misconception you know we think like we have to find this grandiose kind of purpose in life Whereas if we can work on ourselves a little bit every day, if we can be conscious and aware and meaningful in our day to day actions and the way that we engage with other people, our lives will automatically stand for something. You know, we tend to make everything into something spectacular, you know, something that has to involve great effort. And yet it's the little things that we do on a day to day basis that are important. I always refer to the serenity prayer. I think it's such an amazing concept, you know, and yet so simplistic at the same time. And it's that whole kind of serenity of acceptance of the things that you cannot change. And again, just letting them be. And then the courage to change the things that you can. And again, we tend to focus on the can'ts and we tend to pay very little heed to what we can do. Whereas if we can switch our focus to what we 
we can work on. We develop a sense of autonomy. We feel like as if we have agency in our life. And then there is the discernment to recognize the difference, you know, to look at your life and be like, okay, what can I actually improve? What aspect of myself am I not that particularly um, keen on? Or what am I not proud of? You know, and being, I suppose, finding a middle ground between being too hard on yourself and being too lenient on yourself, because ultimately there are always going to be some hard truths that we come across when we start self-inquiry. There's always going to be things about ourselves that we may feel a certain amount of shame about or a certain amount of sadness about or guilt about. But that's part and parcel of the journey, you know, and you have to take the good with the bad. But you can't self-flagellate either. You can't beat yourself up about all of your failings forever. It's about, you know, kind of witnessing your humanity and honoring it and accepting yourself for who you are and doing your best to work with your limitations and to build on your strengths, to recognize that you are not your past, you are not your body, you're not your thoughts, you're not your emotions and kind of sit with that for a little while and be like, okay, who am I? Who do I want to be? Can I create myself? Um, you know, where do I want this journey to take me? And who do I want to go on this journey with? And what do I want to, to reflect? And how can I start taking little steps that will get me there, that will reflect, you know, truth and love and peace and um, meaning and purpose and all of the things that a lot of people talk about, but that they never actually find, you know, and it's about taking yourself out of a place of denial and you know out of this kind of place of perfectionism as well when it comes to your self-exploration and your internal inquiry recognizing that you're always going to experience internal conflict recognizing that you're always going to have these little voices in your head and making peace with that and I think that is been it has been a very transformative concept for me, you know, because again, I would have spent a lot of time assuming that I had to transcend and move beyond everything and that I had to reach some sort of, you know, enlightenment. And I went into every practice with a huge expectation and ultimately you come away and you, you feel a lot better for having been there you know but when you let go of the expectation and when you let go of kind of seeing everything that you do as either a success or a failure particularly when it comes to um, meditative or reflective practices when you go into them and you just try to take them for what they are no matter what it is that comes up then you reap a lot more benefit from it. And if you can apply that to your day-to-day -day life, you know, if you can kind of do your best in every situation, but also show a bit of compassion for yourself and, and be a little bit lenient with yourself and be very kind to yourself and kind to other people, then life becomes a lot more peaceful and tranquil and easy to deal with because, you know, you're not always moving on to the next thing. You're not always wondering what you did wrong because there is really no right or no wrong. You just do what you do and you do the best that you can with what you have, where you are. And that's the most we can ask of anyone, you know, and it's if we can kind of, I suppose, project that mindset onto others as well and ex meet other people where they're at and accept them for the, where they're at, um, life gets a whole lot more straightforward. If you are struggling with finding acceptance, if you are struggling to recognize where it is that you need to, I suppose, create self-awareness and develop more acceptance, then I can help you. Get in touch with me on the website. It's fundamentals.ie.